take a moment as I return here to the area that I was born. Let me say a few personal words. As we launch this campaign for president, you deserve to know where I came from because family history obviously heavily influences the values that we develop as adults. I was born literally a few miles away from here on East 26th Street in Kings Highway. And my family and I lived in a three and a half room rent controlled apartment. My father was a paint salesman who worked hard his entire life but never made much money. And my mother raised my brother and me. I learned a great deal about immigration as a child because my father came from Poland at the age of 17 without a nickel in his pocket, without knowing one word of English. He came to the United States to escape the crushing poverty that existed in his community and to escape widespread anti-Semitism. And it was a good thing that he came to this country because virtually his entire family was wiped out by Hitler and Nazi barbarism. I am not going to tell you that I grew up in a home of desperate poverty. That would not be true. But what I will tell you is that coming from a lower middle class family, I will never forget about how money, or really lack of money, was always a point of stress in our family. My mother's dream was that someday our family would move out of that rent controlled apartment to a home of our own. That dream was never fulfilled. She died young while we still lived in that rent control apartment. My experience as a child living in a family that struggled economically powerfully influenced my life and my values. I know where I came from. Forget. Unlike Donald Trump, who shut down the government and left 800,000 federal employees without I know what it's like to be in a family that lives paycheck to paycheck. Now it is true. I did not have a father who gave me millions of dollars to build luxury skyscrapers, <laughs> casinos, and country clubs. I did not come from a family that gave me a $200,000 allowance every year beginning at the age of three. As I recall, my allowance was 25 cents a week. <laughs> but I had something more valuable. I had the role model of a father who had unbelievable courage in journeying across an ocean with no money in his pocket to start a new and better life. that prepared me to entertain people on television by telling workers, you're fired. I came from a family who knew all too well the frightening power employers can have over everyday workers. Yes. I did not come from a family that could afford to send my brother and me to an elite boarding school. In fact, I was educated proudly 
in high quality public schools. And began my higher education right here on this campus. Yes! I should also mention that my brother Larry graduated from Brooklyn College. that taught me to build a corporate empire through housing discrimination. Ooh. I protested housing <laughs> discrimination. Yes! Was arrested for protesting school segregation. Yes! And one of the proudest days of my life was attending the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, over the last two years and before that, you and I and millions of Americans have stood up and fought for justice in every part of our society. And we've had some successes. Together, as billionaires and large corporations have attacked unions, destroyed pensions, deregulated the banks, and slashed wages, we have succeeded in raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour in states and cities all across this country. And together, we force Amazon and the Disney Corporation to do the same. And together, we have stood with teachers all across this country. Yes! Who went out on strike to fight for better schools for their kids. Yeah. Together, as the forces of militarism, have kept us engaged in never-ending wars. We have stood together and fought back. For the first time in 45 years, we have utilized the War Powers Act to move us forward to end the horrific Saudi-led war in Yemen. Together is so many of our young people have received criminal records for nonviolent offenses. We have fought to end the war on drugs and have seen state after state decriminalize the possession of marijuana. Woo! And are beginning to see states and communities expunge the records of those who are arrested. We have won some victories, but clearly we have a long, long way to go. And I'm here to tell you that because all of the work we have done together, we are on the brink of not just winning an election, but transforming our country. what that means. When we are in the White House, we will enact a federal jobs guarantee to ensure that everyone in this country is guaranteed a job. There is more than enough work to be done in this country. Let's get it done. problem of urban gentrification yeah! and build the affordable housing this country desperately needs. Yeah! Yeah! When we are in the White House, we will end the decline of rural America. Yeah! Yeah! We will reopen rural hospitals that have been closed. Yeah. And we will make sure that the young people 
in rural communities have decent jobs so that they can remain in the communities that they love. Yeah. yeah. When we are in the White House, we are going to end the epidemic of gun violence in this country. And we are going to pass the common sense gun safety legislation that the overwhelming majority of Americans want to see. When we are in the White House, we're going to address not only the national disparities of wealth and income, but the racial disparities of wealth and income. We are going together to root out institutional racism wherever it exists. Not only will we end the cowardly outrage of voter suppression, we're going to make it easier for people to vote. Not when we are in the White House, we are going to protect a woman's right to control